Hello everyone, Don Milstein, President of iTrack, where it looks like uh, hopefully everyone's at the right presentation on the lighting industry for testing and compliance. Uh, we're excited about the opportunity to speak with you. It's right now one o'clock on the East Coast, 10 o'clock on the West Coast, so we'll uh, get going another minute or so. We got uh, some people still joining on. I uh, just want to be uh, courteous to them, so be patient another minute or two and uh, we'll kick this off. Thank you very much. All right, we'll get going in another minute. Looks like we have a uh, some more people joining on, and then uh, we'll kick it off, and they can join us once they uh, get in. Okay, let me uh, get going. Welcome, everyone. Again, my name is Don Milstein, president of Vitrec, and uh, hopefully you're at the right presentation for uh, testing and compliance for the lighting industry. Uh, we'll be joined uh, by Bob D'Amico, our Eastern Regional Sales Manager. He'll be the main presenter today. Uh, Bob, why don't you say hello to the folks? Hi, everyone. Uh, again, thanks for uh, for giving us a little bit of your time uh, to uh... Uh, to join in our webinar. I hope uh, you'll find this uh, very informative and you'll be able to take something away from this. Very good. So Bob, uh, if you go, if you can see his uh, phone number there and if we go to the next slide. Oh, hang on. There we go. Yep. There's uh, email addresses for both Bob and myself uh, at any time. Uh, feel free to send us some emails with questions as a follow-up. Uh, just a few ground rules. Um, what we're going to do is keep the microphones mute just to kind of keep it clean for everyone to hear, which is uh, good. But at any time, you can use the chat feature, which is the little circle in the corner there. It's usually on the right-hand side of your screen up top, but it might be different for yours. Send in questions as we're going throughout the presentation. Uh, we'll have people monitoring that to answer them as we're going. And then uh, periodically throughout, you'll see this screen every, you know, five or six screens, uh, slides, where we'll stop, take questions. We'll open up the microphones anywhere anybody's got a question. Um, and then uh, we'll keep going. So, you know, let's try to make this interactive if you have questions, uh, and we'll do it in this format. This presentation will be made available to everyone. Uh, after the session, uh, both uh, emailed out to you, but we also are, will be recording it, so you can go to our website and hear a playback. Uh, we've been doing this for the past uh, month and a half, I guess, really trying to still connect and educate why we got uh, this worldwide uh, epidemic of COVID going on, uh, and it's been very effective. So you'll see on our website, all the other presentations are listed, and we have a few more coming up uh, over the next couple of weeks. So you will get it, but feel free, you know, take notes as you go, but 
rest assured you will be getting on the presentation. Uh, so like I said, uh, my name again is Don Milstein, Bob D'Amico will be uh, presenting after a couple of slides here that I'll do a little introduction. Bob is well over you know, 20, 30 years in the industry and uh, worked for some of the major companies out there. So it'll be a, a good uh, presentation where you'll be educated with the focus on the lighting. But just to give you a little intro to Vitrec and, and how we've gotten into this market where we're you know, really becoming uh, experts at on the lighting side. Company is over 30 years old, one of the leaders in uh, test and measure, especially on the high voltage side. We're headquartered in San Diego, California. That's where we do our engineering and manufacturing, customer service, all that, calibration. Uh, so everything we do, American made, uh, but we are an international company. We have sales representatives in over 30 countries, and we've sold throughout the world. Uh, so very much take an international view, both from product-wise uh, standards and compliance, uh, you know, that are out there. We, we do look at it from an international perspective. Our core products include the high pot testers for electrical safety testing, and, and that will be presented uh, throughout this conversation. We do a lot in the cable test systems, right? And automated set, uh, test stations for cable tests. Power analyzers to look at energy usage and conversion, and this will be uh, also part of this presentation. We have a line of high voltage meters, which are uh, critical for looking at products uh, from a voltage standpoint and in both laboratory space and in product uh, areas. Uh, a newer product for us is the electronic DC load, very uh, high level load that we introduced this year is also part of our lighting offering. And all of our facility, our facility, I guess, in uh, San Diego is ISO 17025 accredited lab. So therefore, not only are the products that go out, go through that calibration and you can get certification, but if post uh, sale a year later you want to go and send it back to us that's fine and now you can use your local labs but we are set up to do calibration of our own products uh, on a going forward basis and that and really ultimately talks to the high level of our facility for test and measurement equipment getting it out the door keeping and maintaining that calibration the industries we serve are kind of all over the map in the in the core markets right semiconductors and lighting like we've talked about are uh, big areas medical uh, aerospace and defense uh, and we go on and on but what has been critical to us and i'm proud to say as a company when this COVID ep epidemic hit and california said everybody go home uh we did that but right away we were we were co in compliance with that we are a critical infrastructure and what that meant is we were able to stay functioning. And we had customers from the aerospace, from the medical world, come to us and say, You're criti we're critical customers. You need to keep up. We need your products. And uh, our employees did a great job getting back in the office, keeping the safe distances and all the safety procedures from the CDC. And I uh, just want to you know, show that we really kind of stepped up the game from all of our employees, and I'm proud of that. Um, so, but it is a vast uh, industry. And when you look at our customers, you know, it's kind of, we break it in a few major areas, right? The consumer products area, whether it's a refrigerator with Sub-Zero or a G toaster or Apple computer, uh, they're using our products for all different levels. On the commercial industrial side, uh, a lot in the, you know, traditional electrical manufacturers, electrical equipment guys like the Siemens and Eaton, as well as the players in uh, healthcare. Phillips and others, and the aerospace. Uh, so we're, that's where a lot of the critical infrastructure was coming from. The last area uh, is the green is sustainable. And you know we look at lighting and LED lighting, as well as all the battery manufacturers and electric vehicles. Uh, a great growth market and uh, customers there. And then the labs themselves, the testing labs, whether it's the national labs like UL and TUV, or some of the government labs, uh, they're using our products. For their own testing they're using our high voltage meter as a standard in a lot of countries labs so uh, you know it's pretty good um, i guess justification and uh, for our products and how they're being used uh, across the the various uh, marketplaces okay. 
And like we said, you know, we'll, we'll focus on a couple of these products, but the high pod testers, uh, hopefully you're familiar with, you know, anytime a product comes off a production line that's electrical, you want to make sure it doesn't have electrical leakage or ability to shock someone, run it through the high pod test. The power analyzers are used both in the R&D labs as well as on the production floor. All right, so we're getting it on, on both areas. The loads, our digital load is, is really one of the uh, industry leading ones, uh, fully electronic for looking at voltage, current, power, and resistance. Uh, real key on the drivers, LED drivers and the battery areas and power supplies. And then the high voltage meter, uh, really world class. Uh, all of our products tend to be, give you the full range uh, for accuracy and safety and all the other test procedures, but really strong at the higher end, right? At the high end of accuracy. And you'll see, we'll mention that about the power analyzers. Uh, how that accuracy allows you to really do all the standard testing that you need. Uh, with that, I just want to see any questions. Uh, hopefully everyone's got their phones on mute so we don't have feedback. Uh, but feel free to shoot a chat or if you've got an immediate question, go ahead and uh, unmute your phone. If not, I'll turn it over to Bob. All right. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Don. Uh, again, th thanks everyone for uh, joining in today and giving us a little bit of your time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the lighting industry in general, uh, testing and compliance, uh, focusing in on that. And we'll start off with the, a little bit of history on, uh, you know, how the, how the industry got to where it is today. Uh, back about 45 years ago, if my math is correct, uh, the country was going through somewhat of an energy crisis, uh, oil crisis, all those kinds of things. So uh, at the time, the Department of Energy uh, established this uh, Energy Policy and Conservation Act of 1975, and it established mandatory minimum efficiency standards for, among other things, lighting products. And that includes, you know, from back in the day, the good old fluorescent lighting, uh, light, lighting and tubing, uh, which is still in, in, in places, in a lot of places, uh, compact fluorescent lighting, electronic HID, induction lamps, uh, and LED lighting. And that's really where our focus is going to be uh, today on this presentation is on LED lighting. And with that LED lighting, there are a couple of standards that we're going to be talking about um, in, in somewhat, in some detail. So um, <clears throat> in addition, there are other voluntary certification programs and initiatives enabling energy saving lighting products to meet additional and targeted efficiencies of standards and specifications. Um, I picked out a couple of these um, organizations. There are quite a few, uh, but to kind of keep this in, you know, nice, nice, short and sweet, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Energy Star, which was established in 1992. Uh, it's an EPA approved. Um, group uh, and you know just some of the uh, some of the specs that show up in in a lot of these different groups uh, have to do with minimum luminous efficacy uh, and that particular one for energy star talks about you know however much power that device is using will dictate how many lumens per watt um, is acceptable uh, and certainly if you could come in uh, better than that then uh, all, all the best uh, the Design Lights Consortium is a utility-based uh, organization. Uh, the solid state lighting technical requirements in their particular case call out uh, 80 to 120 lumens per watt minimum efficacy. Uh, and that's strictly decided by product type, whether it's a small little uh, LED lamp, uh, outdoor lighting, it could be a whole bunch of uh, different types of products and it will fall into uh, those that category of 80 to 120. Uh, the CEC, which is the California Energy Commission, uh, really, really focuses in on energy efficiency more than anything else. Uh, and some of the items they talk about are standby power being 200 milliwatts or less, and the product having a power factor of 0 0.7 or greater. Uh, the LED Lighting Facts uh, Organization, another Department of Energy, uh, group is uh, mandated by the, by Energy Star, and when a particular product uh, is finished, has gone through the qualification, compliance, and so on, uh, that label, that lighting facts label, must appear somewhere on the package. 
Uh, and, and it's showing items like uh, light output in lumens, uh, watts, electrical power, uh, lumens per watt as the efficacy we talked about, and color accuracy as well. So you're gonna see that form, uh, I'm sorry, that label on any on most types of packaging that have gone through the testing and compliance that we're talking about. Another organization I picked out was the Municipal Solid State Lighting Consortium. Again, another Department of Energy uh, group that is uh, responsible for outdoor lighting, uh, you know, parking lots, streets, uh, even just parking lots, areas, uh, you know, big areas is uh, typically what they they focus in on. Now, while all these programs and initiatives have different objectives and requirements, they all have precise measurement and unique submission requirements to assure compliance. Any questions at this point in time? Looks like Again, you can use your yep, yep, you can use your, your little chat bubble, or if you want to unmic, uh, unmute, I should say, your microphone, please do so. And just give it a couple of seconds. And if I don't see or hear anything, then we'll uh, we'll move on. Okay, in uh, looking at uh, the all these standards and specifications that are out there, typically all of them focus in on four main areas: uh, you know, performance energy efficiency, verification, and safety certification. Um, on the performance side, typically we're talking about photometry, photometry which is all the, you know, the lighting me measurements, lumens, things along those lines, and electrical uh, uh, parameters, voltage, current, power, and so on. Energy efficiency, we talk about luminous efficacy, which has to do with the amount of electrical input power versus the amount of light power coming out on the other end of the uh, the fixture and certainly energy efficiency of led drivers on the verification side we typically talk about consumption uh you know kind of a long-term type of situation where you've got a device hooked up to some sort of power analyzer and it's you know chugging along and it's just monitoring how much power it's using over a certain period of time uh, last but not least, safety certification, which has to do with the shock hazards, fire, and health concerns. And you know, keep in mind these these four pro, uh, testing uh, arenas are really uh, what uh, any type of customer who's who's uh, developing a product they want to go through these steps, follow those standards and specifications, so they have a kind of a a, a good feeling as far as being, hey, you know, our product will comply with all the, all the standards that are set out. So now when the product goes to some of the testing facilities like UL and CSA and TUV and Intertech, uh, they have a good, uh, good feeling that, hey, this product will indeed pass uh, all the testing and compliance that's required. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the specific uh, compliance testing uh, that uh, you know, the, the first one is the uh, IES LM79-19. Uh, the dash 19 part of that uh, is the year the uh, the document was updated, which it was certainly done last year. Uh, the version previous to that was LM7908, uh, and it's issued by the Illuminating Engineering Society, which was established in 1906, uh, back the Thomas Edison uh, Thomas Edison area in New York City. And they are still uh, still uh, working out of New York City as as, uh, as we speak. Uh, LM 7919 is an approved method for optical and electrical measurements of solid state lighting products, and this is a standard and a specification. I want to make sure everyone's clear on, you know, standard means hey, we suggest you do it this way using this type of equipment, where the specs is really a quantitative. Hey, when you're measuring that, you should be getting this or better. Okay, and in uh, LM 7919, uh, again, there are four major areas of uh, testing requirements that have to do with optical measurements, which includes lumens, chromacity, luminous flux, and a couple of other items. Uh, when we talk about electrical power, we talk about voltage, current, power, and power factor. And I, I bolded in there uh, in red, uh, K equals two, which is a confidence interval. And that's really the biggest difference between LM7919 and LM7908. Uh, the previous version, LM7908, talked about a confidence interval of K factor of one, which means that when you take a measurement, uh, you have about a 68% level of confidence that my reading is good. 
Uh, with the update for LM7919, that confidence interval has been boosted to a K factor of two, which now boosts that number up to a 95% level of confidence that I'm going to be pretty pretty happy with my with my measurements. And the specs listed just below that are what those uh, those new confidence interval specs have to do with. The com confidence interval is definitely tied into the accuracy by by boosting that confidence interval, what we're doing is we're actually saying, hey, your accuracy of your power meter has to be at this point. Okay, when we talk uh, system efficacy, again, lumens per watt. Uh, if you look at the picture off to the right there, that's a, a, a blow up of a, um, a spotlight that has a LED driver inside of it. In order to do some sort of system uh, efficiency, on the on that particular device it'd be very difficult to do it on the led driver by itself so in a situation like that what you'd have to do is monitor the input power coming into the the spotlight and then monitor the light output on the other side and that's where you're going to get your system efficacy or your lumens per watt now if the driver is easily accessible then you'd be able to do a driver efficiency Again, if that driver is not integrated into the um, into the fixture itself, and last, uh, we do some physical and environmental tests, uh, including temperature, vibration, airflow, and a few other items. Next standard we want to talk a little bit about is uh, ANSI C82-16, which is from the American National Standards Institute. And that is an LED driver document dedicated to the methods and measurements. Again, this particular document is standards and specifications. And for the most part, its main area of focus is on the LED driver input parameters and output parameters. Uh, all those, as you can see, are pretty much the same with being having power factor, total harmonic distortion, inrush current uh, on the input side and that we've got uh, energy efficiency on the output side. Uh, we're measuring items such as uh, open circuit voltage, peak, ripples, and uh, same thing on the current side. Okay, another, another test that kind of comes into play, especially when we're talking Energy Star, uh, is a, uh, a document uh, numbered EN50564, which is a standby power document. Uh, and I've been uh, attached here a screenshot of the Vitrec power analyzer. And the reason why I did it is I wanted to illustrate the fact that uh, if you look up into the top, top part of the screen where it says configure, and you'll notice that EN50564 is listed there, uh, which is real nice because now you have a device you want to put through standby power testing, uh, the specification portion of 505604 is built into the unit. So you could hook a unit up to this, hit that standby power button on the right side, hit your start button, and you're getting your uh, a real good uh, idea of how your standby power gives you all your volts, uh, volt current, power, power factor, and so on. And uh, and everything's good there. Now, an interesting point, since we're talking the, the lighting industry, uh, when we get into some of our smart lighting, uh, you know, the, the uh, fixture itself can be turned off, but it probably does have some electronics in there that's constantly monitoring it, you know, over the internet, you know, con communicating to the outside world or an app of some sort. Uh, so again, you can, you can perform a standby power measurement uh, for a lot of the smart lighting devices as well. Okay, next we're going to talk a little bit about uh, harmonics, uh, harmonics emissions, and in, in particular EN61000. Uh, again, I've enclosed a or attached a screenshot down below uh, where it calls out EN61000 harmonics. And the again, we've got in the Vitrec power analyzers, we have the uh, EN61000 specifications built into the unit. Again, you can have a, a device, uh, um, uh, a unit that's under test, and you can start uh, uh, assessing what's going on, and it will let you know if the device passes based on the harmonics requirements of EN61000. Uh, the right side of the screen is actually a harmonic screen. 
uh, that has that EN61000. In this particular case, you can see up here it says Class A. And what that does is it that Class A puts those little red tick marks on the uh, on the graph that you see below. So anything that's riding above those red tick marks actually turns to red, meaning that in this particular case, uh, this device is at this point is failing uh, the harmonics levels that are uh, required for EN61000. Okay, we're gonna take a quick, uh, quick stop here. Uh, again, I'd like to just uh, open up the floor, see if anyone has any questions. And again, you can use your, uh, your chat bubble or you can unmute your microphone. Okay, it looks like everything's pretty clean, so we're gonna move on. Okay, now that we've talked uh, about the, um, the standards and specifications, uh, now we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the equipment that's needed to be able to perform those, those tests that we, uh, we spoke about just a little bit ago. Um, on the performance side, uh, we typically, you know, most of the performance of an LED driver or, or a completed device uh, during the design phase is a lot of it is electrical. And to be able to monitor all those uh, requirements, parameters, and so on, uh, you could use a couple of different devices, power analyzer, a ballast analyzer, and a DC load to, for in, a, in the case of an LED driver, you know, vary that load to see how the, uh, how the, uh, the driver is going to react to that. <clears throat> On as far as energy efficiency goes, again, in the design phase and sometimes in the production phase, uh, you could use a power analyzer, a ballast analyzer, and a DC load again to be able to vary the load situation to find out if the efficiency of the LED driver uh, is, uh, is up to par what it's supposed to be doing. On the verification side, again, typically during the production phase, uh, this is where your consumption comes in. You wanna find out how much power over a, a period of time is being used. And again, you could use a power analyzer for that, as well as a ballast analyzer. And last but not least, as far as safety certification is concerned, uh, on the production line, typically towards the end, uh, your production line in final test, you may want to perform a shock hazard. Uh, and in that particular case, you would need to use a high pot tester and possibly a high, a high voltage switch. And for those who don't know what a high voltage switch is, I'm going to get into that um, in a couple of slides. Okay, so, um, you know, Don talked a little bit about the Vitrec, uh, you know, and the company a little while ago. A few, a few years back, uh, Vitrec purchased Zytron. Uh, Zytron uh, uh, and, and Vitrec have been in the, uh, the lighting industry for many years. And we're gonna go over a little bit of some of the equipment on the Zytron side first, uh, to see, just to give you an idea of the, uh, the equipment that's available out there. And we're gonna start with the uh, Zytron 757XR ballast tester, which is available in one, two, three, or four tube versions. And that's the 257 front panel and back panel on the right side there. And if you notice those four little rectangular boxes, uh, that's, that indicates that there, this particular unit is set up to do either four tubes or four ballasts at the same time. When it comes to measuring for phot photometry, the XT1600 portable micro spectrometer uh, is going to give you a lot of those uh, uh, lighting characteristics, your lumens, your luminous flux, things along those lines, and the, uh, the spectrometer can certainly do that. Now, when it comes to the power analyzer on the Zytron side, uh, there's that R2801 and 2802. Uh, the picture you see just below that happens to be our 2802, which happens to be a two-channel power analyzer. Uh, and I put the word legacy in there because I wanted to, uh, you know, to kind of to move into the next phase of the equipment that's out there these days. Uh, the 2801 uh, met all the requirements of LM7908 uh, without a problem. But now with the update to this IES document, uh, 79-19, we're finding that the power analyzer, the 2801 in particular, uh, does not quite meet the standards of, uh, for accuracy uh, that's called out in 7919. So where do we go from here? So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the, Vi the Vitrec side of uh, things and some of the Vitrec products. And the Vitrec PA900 uh, power analyzer 
uh, does indeed meet the requirements of that LM79-19 as far as accuracy is concerned. Uh, we mentioned, uh, Don mentioned a little bit about our new product, the new uh, DC, uh, DL, I'm sorry, electronic DC load series. Uh, that comes in a couple of flavors. We've got uh, two different wattage levels and three different voltage levels. So you have a possibility of up to six different models that, that you can choose from that. On the safety side, we've got our V7X series high pot testers as well as our 95X series high pot testers. And I'm going to get into some of the features and characteristics of those uh, in the upcoming slides. Uh, just to give you a little bit of an example uh, of the Vitrec and Zytron equipment in action, uh, the Vitrec um, PA900 Zytron XT2640, which are the same, in all essence, the same power analyzer, uh, is inserted here into a customer sphere, uh, integrated sphere system update to meet the electrical accuracy requirements of LM7919. Uh, this is a great example. Uh, the arrows pointing to the new unit, the, the Zytron XT2640 power analyzer. The, the old configuration had that 28 Zytron 2801 power analyzer, uh, which again is not up to snuff as far as the new accuracy requirements. So the picture you see on the left is the Zytron power analyzer uh, on a workbench at the customer site. And then what you see on that workbench is now incorporated into that beige colored box uh, and talking and communicating with the, uh, the integrating sphere. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit now about LED driver efficiency. And for this example, we're gonna use the Vitrec PA900 power analyzer, which can, is a uh, device that can be configured from one to four channels. And as you can see from the back panel here, we're gonna be looking at two of the channels. On the, uh, on the LED driver side of things, the input to my LED driver is gonna be a 120 volt AC signal, and the output of my driver is, tip is gonna be a DC signal, typically around 10 volts or so. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my input signal, my 120 volt signal, and I'm gonna route my red and black wires over here. Hope you guys can see my, my mouse moving around. And I'm gonna be connecting those to channel one for voltage down below here. And on the current side, I'm gonna take my input current, run it into my power meter, back out to the input side of my LED driver. So now I've got my voltage and current on channel one connected right over here. And then my output of my LED driver, again, I'm gonna take my red and black connections for voltage, connect those to channel two, and I'm gonna take my LED driver output current, run it into channel two of the power analyzer, then back out and then connect that up to my LED luminaire, my test, my uh, LED fixture, uh, whatever uh, words you want to call it. So now we've got our um, LED driver and our power analyzer hooked up properly. So how do we measure our efficiency? Okay, uh, from the previous diagram, if you remember, I took my channel one and I connected it to uh, my uh, that's my driver input, uh, but I do want to make a point first. Uh, the Vitrec PA900 series power analyzers has a real nice feature called a VPA or virtual power analyzer. And what that does is you can take any one or you know any one to four channels and connect that up and say, hey, that's my that's my virtual power analyzer. So as an example, other than this, let's say I had a three phase motor. What I would do in that particular case is I would take my channel one, two, and three, one for each phase, and I would assign that to my VPA number one as a, uh, you know, to have a, a virtual power analyzer uh, as being a three phase type system. In this particular example, since I connected my, uh, using my channel one, which is the input to my LED driver, I'm going to uh, connect that to VPA number one, and I'm gonna assign that as my input to my LED driver. Flipping over to the right side of the page, I've taken my channel two, and I'm gonna configure that to my VPA number two, and I'm going to assign that to my output power. Now keep in mind, all these, uh, all these um, changes and configurations 
Uh, simply a matter of touch, hitting the touch screen and making the change that you need to make. Okay, so now that we've got our driver output and our driver input, it's pretty simple at that point to calculate my efficiency of my LED driver. So what I mean, I'm looking at here is I've got my output power in yellow. I've got my input power over here in white. I've got my loss, which is the differential between the output and the input. And I've got my, my LED driver efficiency right there. Just a couple of button pushes. And it's, it's as you can see, it's fairly straightforward as far as uh, setting the unit up to be able to do um, LED driver efficiencies. Any questions at this point? So Bob, we got a few on the chat. It's worth okay. sharing with everyone. Uh, yep, the sure. one question was, is the PA900 uh, portable? You know, our power analyzer, and obviously it's fairly small and compact, has a handle. So, uh, you know, it's yeah. usually used on a bench top, but it is portable to move around the facility and from desk yeah, to nice, desk. Nice small footprint. And like Don mentioned, it's very lightweight. Uh, with the handle, you know, it only require it does require AC power uh, as it can't be operated off of DC power. But from that standpoint, it certainly can be used as a portable device. Uh, the other question was whether it was a spectrum analyzer. And, you know, the PA900 does have some spectrum analysis features um, yes. that can be used uh, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Yeah. And uh, maximum frequency is up to five megahertz. Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to be showing in a, just in a little bit uh, the harmonic screen, which can be uh, toggled actually just by hitting a, a certain button. So you could go from between looking at uh, harmonics versus looking at you know harmonics you know from one to fifty kind of thing or one to a hundred or whatever you may be, or you could look at the harmonics based off of you know from a spectrum analyzer standpoint. You're looking at frequency versus level of the voltage or current or so on. And I'll be showing that uh, just in a little bit. Well, that looks like all the questions. And, good. Uh, good to okay. the next, sec next section. Okay, so this is the uh, the last part of the uh, uh, the presentation, and I want to go over here. Uh, all those parameters we've been talking about, you know, voltage, current, power, power factor, efficiency, um, you know, harmonics, all those types of things uh, are easily available uh, on the PA900 power analyzer uh, by using the power data screen, and uh, which is probably the most powerful screen on the power analyzer uh, altogether as far as getting you the most information uh, from your uh, power data screen. You can look at items such as voltage current, uh, power, parent power, which is your VA reading, uh, your reactive power, which is your VARs, your power factor, your frequency. And simply by clicking on where it says channel one, I can get back, whoops, I can get back to my efficiency screen right over here. So as you can see, there's quite a, quite a bit of information here. Uh, also, uh, Ripple can be monitored here simply by looking at my current and determining my AC, my AC component, my DC component, which will help here uh, as far as calculating what your riffle would be. Okay, the harmonic screen. Uh, this is the screen that we were just talking about. Uh, the, by hitting a couple of different buttons, I'm not, I can't really get into it here because there's a couple of different buttons you have to push, but in essence, you could go from uh, having a harmonic screen here where you're, you're looking at your voltage uh, current power harmonics versus the harmonic number, okay? If you switch it over to spectrum analyzer mode, you'll be looking basically at the same graph, but down here, you'll be looking at frequencies instead of harmonic numbers. All right, when you're looking at, your, at our harmonic screen, you've got a graphical format here that can be looked at either linearly or logarithmically. And then you've got tabular values down the side which allow you to look specifically at, um, at the values of each of the harmonics. Now, you're noticing here, you know, I'm, because of the way it's set up, I'm monitoring up to my 50th harmonic, but I can only see my first eight here. So I've got this little yellow bar that you can actually, on the touch screen, you can touch it and drag it, and you'll be able to see the other harmonics coming up and down on the side panel over here as well. Again, on your harmonic screen, you can look at voltage harmonics, current harmonics, power harmonics. Uh, you've got your fundamental frequency. You've got your THD 
of your fundamental uh, signal as well as your total signal over here. And getting back into the EN61000 a little bit, uh, right here it's set up for class A. And these, uh, these little red tick marks, like I mentioned before, are the acceptable limits of that class A version. The, screen, the screenshot down below actually is showing some of the other class requirements of the N61000. And I wanna bring your attention right here to uh, class C, which talks about the, uh, lighting. You know, depending on the type of device, if it's you know, greater than 25 watts, if it's an incandescent lighting, uh, you've got a bunch of, of different um, EN61000 classifications built into the unit. So again, you, you have the ability to see uh, all what's going on as far as harmonics goes. Okay, on the consumption side, uh, typically what you're gonna be doing there is you're gonna be doing a, an integration uh, reading uh, so what you'll, what you'll get is you'll be able to get your voltage, your current, your power, your apparent power, your reactive power from here uh, versus time pretty much. And here's your elapsed time and there's your, your watt hours right up at the top of the screen right there. Again, very simple to get to this screen from our power data screen. We hit this tab right in the middle here and then you'll get a drop down and you can choose whether it's AC, DC coupled, your integrated values and so on. So again, just by, you know, couple of button pushes, you could pretty much get to every single feature the PA900 has to offer. And the last feature I want to talk about on the PA900 is our uh, scope mode. Uh, we have a, you know, real nice, you know, for a non-scope scope, it has a nice high accuracy level, as high as 0.03%. Uh, you can look at up to six different parameters on your, in your scope mode. Uh, and you can set items such as your scaling, your offset, color, uh, color, time base, trigger, trigger position. And we've got also in scope mode, we can look at it in two ways, uh, standard scope mode and cycle view, which is going to not narrow that down to a single single cycle. And from here, you can also do some of your uh, some of your ripple calculations uh, by introducing your tracers and you can get your values to be able to uh, calculate what your ripple would be. Okay, uh, last I wanna talk again about safety, uh, but certainly not least, uh, the electrical shock that we spoke about a little while ago, uh, high voltage withstanding or high pot testers are one and the same. Uh, I had mentioned that Vitrec has two different series of high pot testers, our V7X series and our 95X series. Uh, and the X stands for, the, typically you'll substitute the X with a particular digit, uh, one through five in most cases up to seven. Uh, and all that means is the by changing that number, that will enable you to do more and more tests. For example, you could do AC, AC high pot, DC high pot, insulation resistance, continuity, and in some cases, ground bond. And that's going to be dictated by what model you end up putting in over here. For example, V74 would do all of those tests, including ground bond testing. The 9.5 series is set up the same way as far as the model numbers and the capabilities. Uh, but did want to step back just for a second. The V7 high pot testers can test 5 kV AC and DC right from the front panel. The 9.5 series expands that. Uh, there are a couple of options plus external options that'll get you up to 30 kV on the AC side and up to 15 kV on the DC side. Uh, the 9.5 series also offers some other features such as arc detection, uh, and a very high accuracy on the um, on the current measuring capability side. Now, uh, before I mentioned a, a, a Vitrec 964 high voltage switch, let's say you're in a, a situation on your production line where you have uh, you're, you're uh, kicking out LED drivers, okay, and you want to test ten of them at one time. So how could you do that? Well, there's a couple of ways. You could either have ten high pod testers, or you could have a high pod tester. And you could, you could introduce the Vitrec 964 high voltage switch. That, what that high voltage switch is, it takes the testing voltage out of either the V7 series or the 95 series uh, high pot tester. Uh, you introduce that to the front panel here, and then you've got a series of relay boards that actually take that high voltage and switch it to multiple points. So in this case, you could have 10 relays up out there, and you can switch from relay number one to relay number 10 to be able to test the 10 
different LED drivers that just came off the production line. That process is done very quickly. Uh, you know, depending on how long you need to uh, to do your high pod test, well, that's going to you know certainly factor in. But the switching time is very quick with these units. The other point I wanted to make real quick before I finish up, uh, we have a software package called QT Enterprise, which runs the high pod either of those high pod testers. And if you happen to be using the 964 switch as well, the QT Enterprise software can configure that high voltage switch um, at the same time. Uh, I just want to talk real quick. Uh, Don mentioned it uh, in the introduction uh, that Vitrec is, a, is an A2LA accredited calibration lab. Each product that we have comes with a NIST traceable certification, a certificate, I should say. And uh, it, uh, if you happen to need data, uh, NIST traceable data with that for slight upcharge, we can provide that for you. And same goes for the ISO 17025 accreditation. Uh, for an upcharge for for the uh, from your device, uh, we're able to uh, provide that 17025 accreditation for you as well. And I think that's pretty much it. Any other uh, additional questions at this point? I think that's the uh, that's the uh, the last slide anyway. So uh, open up the floor for questions. Uh, I want to thank everyone for your time, and uh, you know, again, I'd like to open up the floor for any additional questions that may uh, pop up. Sure. Good job, Bob. I don't see any other chat questions. Uh, anybody want to open their mic? Got a specific application you're working on or have a question? Like we said, this presentation will be sent to you, uh, which includes all of our contact information. So if you have a follow up uh, specific for you, we welcome the opportunity to have uh, someone talk to you, whether it's one of our engineers, application engineers, or the sales engineers. I yeah, just want to, again, just want to thank everyone for your time. I know it's kind of crazy these days, and uh, just to be able to give us a little bit of your time is uh, very much appreciated. All right. Very good. Everyone enjoy okay. the rest of the afternoon, and uh, okay. thank you again for your time. Okay, everyone. Thanks again. Thanks, Bob. Jeff Edwards here. Nice job. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Good hearing from you. Stay healthy. Good, Bob. You too.